Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to our, our, our elders and apostles of great millstone that we will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and start off that less, this lesson with that scripture. All right. First uh, uh, Timothy 5 and 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. All right. And that's why we give double honor to our elders and apostles of Great Milton. Now, when you go into it, you know, it, that uh, the honors can also represent monetary as well, you know, because when you get into the history of things, you know, the men of the Lord, um, being a man of the Lord was their job, you know, kind of like the Levites, all right? The Levites, you know, they, um, the Wadi Abba Shai, they, um, they didn't work you know, a regular nine to five job, all right? Their source of income was the priesthood, you know? They received the tithes of the people, okay? And that was like their uh, source of income. That was like the, the wealth and welfare system in the kingdom, if you will, you know? So nonetheless, or in the ancient world, rather, but nonetheless, kind of like how men and Lord were back in the ancient world, all right? And when you go into the history, you read certain scriptures, You'll hear, you'll, you'll see how, you know, they reverence the men of the Lord. They reverence the prophets. You know, nowadays people talk shit about the men of the Lord. They look down upon them, just like how they did Yahweh Shai. But back during the ancient world, the men of the Lord and the prophets were feared, and they were reverenced because people saw how Yahweh Bashim Shai was dealing with them. You know, they would give the men of the Lord gifts, like they do now. You know, but. Israel understood that as a whole. Now it's a little different, you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, back in the ancient world, you know, they reverenced the men of the Lord. So the reason why I'm just bringing this up is because, you know, as far as the monetary thing about the honors, but nonetheless, we give double honors to those and apostles of the Great Millstone in the spirit, man. All right? In the spirit, you know? And, um, you know, I didn't mean to make this lesson long, okay? But, um... You know, I was listening to a lesson that a brother sent in the chat, you know, about these two dudes getting on the apostles and stuff like that, you know. Um, but my thing is, you know, you might be getting on the apostles, okay, but what are their fruits? You know, that's my answer to the question, what are their fruits? What are the apostles' fruits? Because the apostles aren't bringing forth fruit like Yahana, like Nate, like Comfy, you know, like Bubble Eye Blackfish, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And all those other dudes that they got by words for. Because the scripture talk about having by words for false prophets, you know? And so the apostles through the spirit, they're bringing forth righteous fruit. All right, this is Matthew chapter 7, and verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Okay, so point being, the apostles are bringing forth good fruit, man. Regardless of how you want to look at the apostles, with all biasness, or if that's even a word, salakia, and that's why the Lord said he chose the um, the weak things of the world to confound the mighty, you know, and the base things of the world to confound them which are strong. I'm paraphrasing because 
you know, sometimes brothers, brothers ain't, you know, the most scholarly, if you will. You know, I didn't get a college degree. I never went to college. So, you know, Salakia, if, that, if biasness is not a word, I believe it is. But if it's not, Salakia. Nonetheless, without being biased, all right, just to play it safe, without being biased, all right, um, you know, look at the apostles' fruit without having bias, you know, without looking and saying, oh, I don't like them, you know, da, da, da. Well, look at their fruit, though. Look at how much men have, or, and women, and children, okay, men, women, and children have came into the fold via the apostles, obviously via the doctrine of Yahweh Bashim al okay, obviously, but you have to admit that the Lord definitely set these men up as the leaders of Israel, and even before I was in the truth, or now I don't want to say before I was in the truth, but there's a point when you come into the truth, but you're still a little worldly, you know, but when I was early in the truth, I knew G- I knew the Lord was dealing with GMS, you know, and it was and I actually seen the uh, Charlotte camp. I was seeing the Charlotte camp teaching and I was early in the truth. You know, I'm be honest. I was still watching other camps at that time. Now I don't do it anymore because it's just a waste of time. Really, if you if I'm watching another camp, it's really just to see where they go off at this point, you know. But nonetheless, when I was early in the truth, I was watching other camps. But now I don't even waste my time to watch some other camps, you know. Because it's really just a waste of time, in my opinion, you know. But if brothers want be watching other camps for, you know, to uh, see how they line up with the doctrine, you know, that's cool. Because I know, the, you know, some brothers who are more grounded in the faith, they'll watch other camps just to see if they be going off to see what type of madness they might be talking about so they can correct them, you know. But um, nonetheless, you know, to keep the point brief, all right, when I first came in the truth, I knew the Lord was dealing with the with uh, GMS. I didn't, I didn't even really know about the apostles, at least as far as I can remember. I didn't really know about the apostles, you know. But I knew as far as GMS goes, I knew the Lord was dealing with GMS. Now, am I sitting here saying that I'm somebody special? No, I'm just a worm, all right? I'm just a worm. Nonetheless, you know, even me being worldly to a degree, you know, I still could see in the spirit that, the Lord is dealing with these men, you know, and now if I'm looking at the men that came up under the apostles, going back to what the apostles fruit, what the scriptures just say that we just read, you know, man by his fruits, man. And think about it. There is people all around the four corners of the globe that in the spirit, their spirit resonates with the apostles and elders of great millstone, you know, so my thing is like, okay, for you dudes talking bad about the apostles, all right, cool, you doing that, whatever, but where, where is your justification, you know, and they try to say the year 2000, which that was a stumbling block, you know, and for those who stumbled at it, were meant to stumble at it, all right, matter of fact, since we're already in the book of Matthew, let's go over a couple of scriptures, Matthew 18, Verse 7, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. All right? Yeah, so, yeah, offenses need become, there are certain people who are appointed to stumble at the stumbling blocks of the Lord. And how should I say that? There's going to be a time where you desire to see me and you shall not see me. I rough to paraphrase You know, so that was prophecy being fulfilled within itself. You know, and then they try to bring out the scripture in, in, in the Old Testament where it talks about if a prophet says something and what he says doesn't come to pass, you shall not fear him. You know, but ultimately, you can't resist the spirit. You can't resist the spirit. Okay, and the scripture say man's going to the Lord. So the apostles, you know, as far as the year 2000, stumbling block, Yahweh I said there was going to be a time coming where you would desire to see him and you shall not see him. That prophecy had to be fulfilled, okay? And Yahweh Shai, under the Most High, he's the chief spirit. So that prophecy had to be fulfilled. So they couldn't resist the spirit concerning that. All right? And that's how you know that they're the men of the Lord. Because who was the Lord speaking to when he said, you shall desire to see me, but you shall not be able to? Rough and paraphrase it, man. Who else was the Lord speaking to? He was speaking to the disciples. All right? And then also adding forward to it, the next part I wanted to make... 
the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Peter, you know, he was so persuaded in his spirit that he wasn't going to deny Yahweh Shai. But Yahweh Shai was like, Peter, you're going to deny me thrice. You know? You think Peter wanted to deny the Lord? Obviously not. But he couldn't resist the spirit and the prophecy had to be fulfilled of him denying the Lord thrice, man. All right? So nonetheless, does that mean Peter is not going to make it to the kingdom? Does that mean Peter is not a man of the Lord anymore? Even though he denied Yahweh Shai? No. Okay? No. It doesn't apply to him, man. Because if you can receive it, Peter is, is David. In the, Peter is King David in the reincarnation, if you can receive it. So, no matter what, you know, Peter's going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord made a covenant with David about how he's going to give him, you know, the kingdom. You know, his seed is going to be established after him, so on and so forth. You know, so yeah, he might have denied the Lord three times, but he couldn't resist the spirit. Peter didn't want to do that, but he did it anyways because he couldn't resist the spirit. Same thing with the apostles, you know, and the apostles even said it too. The apostles even said it, you know, during the around that time of 2000, they said that, you know, you know, the kingdom's not coming. Right. You know what I'm saying? They they were able to see it, too. They admitted that, you know, they might have went off, if you will. But nonetheless, um, you know, that was a stumbling block, man. That was a stumbling block. And the scriptures say, who have not offended with their tongue? You know, I believe that's in the book of Sirach. So I'm sure we all said something that we wish we never said. The scriptures say, who have not offended with his tongue? The same as a perfect man. And guess what? We all in the flesh, man. Ain't none of us perfect, man. All right? Now, I'm not trying to knock the apostles, you know, because I don't want this to be seeming like it's going that direction. I'm not trying to knock the apostles. But I'm really saying this on their behalf, man. None of us are perfect. You know, we're all in the flesh, man. So for someone to really be harping on the apostles, like, you know, what I'm saying they got their new bodies already there in the kingdom already. You know, it's really through. Like, where does the mercy come in? Where does the understanding come in? You know, because don't get me wrong. I highly respect the apostles and I admire and I admire and I look up to the apostles as men of the Lord through Yahweh Bashim al You know, I'm not being a fanboy or something like that. You know, I just highly respect the apostles. OK, and the scriptures talk about knowing them which are over you in the spirit, and which labor among you and esteem them highly for their work's sake. Going back to what? You know, man, by their fruit. So that's why I esteem the apostles highly for their work's sake, man. If it wasn't for the apostles. If it wasn't for Yahweh, Bashim, I said that the apostles, man. All right. You know, a lot of stuff wouldn't be flowing the way it is now, man. The apostles laid down that groundwork like the apostle, like the apostle Paul said, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. You know, you know what I'm saying? We have entered into other men's labors. We have entered into our apostles' labors, man. And here it is. Look at the fruit. Look how much, you know, GMS as a whole is growing. And the apostles even said, the apostles even made a decree, no new members. And look how much GMS is growing, you know? So my thing is, like, for you dudes out there who's hanging on the apostles, you know, okay, putting your flesh aside, pulling, putting your feelings aside, and dealing with logic and understanding and wisdom what are their fruits you know that would be my question to you dudes man all right but let me read this real quick this is first peter 2 and uh verse i gotta read um i'm just gonna go to the point all right first peter 2 and 7 it says unto you therefore which believe he is precious, referring to our Lord Yahweh Shah. All right, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, referring to Yahweh Shah. And so, the back then the scribes and Pharisees they disallowed Yahweh Shah, they denied Yahweh Shah. But guess what, Yahweh Shah, he's the head cornerstone. Same thing with our apostles. You guys are denying our apostles, but Yahweh Shah said to himself, if they receive you. They receive me. So here it is. You're denying the apostles, but they're coming in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. So if you're denying the apostles, ultimately you're denying Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Okay? You know? But nonetheless, verse 8 And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, which is what you do, it's did. You stumbled at the word. Okay? 
All right, you stumbled at the word, man. But ultimately, that was the will of the Lord, you know. Because I'm not saying that y'all are two thirds. I'm not, you know, because that's not my call. The 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 route that you're heading, you're heading down the route of a two third. But for me to tell you that you're a two third, that's really not my call, you know. Because at the end of the day, the Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai is a judge, you know. Nonetheless, all right. It says, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So two thirds were appointed to stumble at this word. Two thirds were, were appointed to be, to find Yahweh Shai offensive. You know, same way how, you know, you guys are being offended in the doctrine of the apostles. Because they're coming in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, whether you would like to admit that or not, you know. So that's just really what I wanted to touch on through the spirit. You know what I'm saying? This lesson can truly go on more. But the point has been made, man. This is this might be another edition of Food for Thought, Lord willing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, you know, you hating on the apostles, but what do their fruits show? You know what I'm saying? What do their fruits show compared to these other camps? Like, like the scriptures say, let the Lord judge between me and thee. If you judge the apostle... You weigh the apostles' righteousness in a balance with these other camps, man. You know, which camp is truly out here putting in work week in and week out for Yahweh Shemashai consistently, you know, and growing at the rate that they are through the spirit and righteousness, you know, and edifying the people and bringing the flock back to Yahweh Shemashai. You know, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that, you know, only the elect is going to come out of GMS. I'm not saying that at all, but. You know, what do their fruits show is basically what I'm saying, man. You know, what do their fruits show, man? All right. What do their fruits show? So, you know, with that, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Kakadash. Double honors to our elders and apostles and great Nelson that we will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Baal.